Holy crap, it got away! Why is it going so fast? What's going on today, Internet? Selfish here with Retrospect. Right here, we've got the Telecast T50 Pro, and this is a tablet I've had a few days to play with here, and this is rocking the Helio G99 processor. There are some similar processors out today to this processor that are being used in gaming handhelds. So I wanted to take a look at this tablet and see what kind of performance we can get out of it as far as the gaming side goes. So let's take a look. All right, here we're gonna enjoy the unboxing experience. Look at that. This is a very beautiful box. It's got words on it, words on this side over here. Also, if you put it upside down, there's words and right side up. Words on that side of the box, sweet. Now this does have a freshness seal, so you gotta open that right up, right there. And then you get that awesome noise that the plastic makes that really makes people relaxed. Yep, okay, that was good. Ooh, it got even better. All right, so now what we're gonna do is look inside. There's the tablet, we can't look at that yet though. No, get, get rid of that. We gotta move that out of the way. Okay, now we're gonna look in here. Oh, we do have a translation manual. So you got things in uh, all the different languages that say the same thing. So if you wanna learn a new foreign language, that's what that's for. So you got one of those, that's pretty cool. Uh, you do have a Type-C charger, that's pretty neat, as well as a pin to take out the uh, memory card. And then we got this case. They gave us a free case, but they hid it at the bottom of the box. Really confusing why they do that. All right, now we have this tablet. We can take a look at it now. Ooh, there's the back of it. That's pretty neat. Okay, all right, so we got some volume rockers and a power switch. Pretty neat. And then where the card goes. Oh, look at that. We have uh, two speakers on this side, two speakers on that side, and a Type-C. So we have four speakers, stereo speakers on this thing. Let's get her fired up. Take a look at it. Oh, look, there I am. Now that we got everything all unboxed and kind of set up here to take a look at, and I actually did reach out to Ipega too about a way to make these stands stand on their own because they don't have a way to do it. They kind of balance like this on their tippy toes because they sit right on this little edge down here. So it doesn't work out real well. But anyways, you're not here to talk about that. We are going to go over a couple of features of these devices here. I've never used this Ipega before. This one's a brand new one to me, as well as this tablet. Just was able to get a little handsy with it, but I haven't tested a whole lot out yet. In fact, I'm probably going to have to pause recording here just thinking about it. I haven't even really set up Daijiju yet, which is what we're going to use to get everything rolling here. But I wanted to go over the specs of these two devices for you real quick, because we're going to kind of go over stuff as we're doing stuff including like these adjusters here you can actually adjust the joysticks on these for how much tension you want on them which is really cool i wish every set of joysticks had that but we'll get into that here in just a little bit we'll start off going over the t50 pro with the g99 in it so it's running android 13 it has an 11 inch 2k fhd 2000 by 1200 120 hertz display like i said it is a g99 it does have two a76 performance cores at 2.2 gigahertz and then six a55 cores that are going to be running at two gigahertz it's got a six nanometer processor Processor. Now just think about that for a second because we are going to come back to that. 16 gigs of RAM, 8 of that is virtual. It's got a 256 gigs of ROM and then I do have a 1 terabyte card in it right now. It does have motion sensors, uh, dual band Wi-Fi, also has 4G network capability. It's an 8000 milliamp battery. It does last a while. 18 watt charging. Four speakers which sound splendid. We'll see. I don't know if I can get the audio to work here so much while I'm filming but we'll give it a shot. And then we'll go over the IPEGA here real quick. I just realized my lights are kind of dim. Ah, oh, that's so much better. All right. This is the PG9777S. Yes, that's three sevens instead of sixes. Thank goodness. This is a Bluetooth controller that actually is set up to fit the body of the Switch as well, but it is expandable. Obviously, it's fitting an 11-inch tablet in it. It actually does fit my monstrous iPad Pro in it as well. This has uh, adjustable rockers. So that, as I said before, you can actually adjust the tension and you can feel it in these little tensioners for your joysticks. So I actually have one a little bit more tense than the other, which is really just complementing your playing style. You don't have to go through a bunch of menus or anything like that. You can actually do it right here on the outside. I do love some manual stuff. Some good old hard labor here on the front. No, but I do like some of the mechanical stuff. Okay, so it does have RGB lighting. The lighting effects do. They'll just keep rotating through if you want, or you can turn them off. Turbo function, extra tele telescoping like I said before it goes all the way up to 286 millimeters and it does have a motor in each side so dual vibration I'll put links down here to both of these neither of these are sponsored just I uh, wanted to kind of talk about them some cool stuff you can do with this setup it's not going to be the most powerful device or anything on the market but it is an 11 inch setup and you know I've been on this quest to try to find like the best like sweet spot for game streaming and that's kind of where I like this with Moonlight PlayStation and Xbox we might demo some Xbox uh, I don't have my PlayStation on right now it's actually unplugged maybe we'll do some moonlight we'll see we'll jump right in i'll look at a couple games in each category and then we'll kind of talk about it a little bit so this should be interesting it'd be a learning experience for all of us so i have put a couple of systems on here and some of these actually aren't right it's from the memory card i first put in here and then decided i wasn't going to use that card just because there's only a couple things i really wanted to tackle so right off the bat the helio g99 is actually the basis for the dimensity 700 chip if you've been 
you're following the Retroid Pocket 4 or 4 Pro, you'll see the Dimensity 900 and the Dimensity 1100. This is uh, the chip that the Dimensity 700 is actually based off of. Not really used in a whole lot other than this tablet. It is made for powerful mobile platforming and gaming. Problem with the tablet is there isn't a performance profile that I've found yet. So I might have to make one or find one that works with it. For this initial testing here today, we're not going to have a performance profile, but we can look at maybe possibly here in the future if I can either get my hands on one or set one up. Yeah, this is what I was kind of worried about. And I didn't really put any games on here either. I just kind of grabbed a memory card to, 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 to do this with. What are we in? Dreamcast? Cool. There's only two games in here. All right, so again, we don't have any profiles to set up here for gaming. So this is just running at normal. There's no performance or high performance option right now. We're going to get what we get. This Ipega is really weird, and uh, it takes a little bit to get used to. I've only used it a couple of times, but I will kind of go over what's different about it than what your normal controller would be. So this is working just fine. This is staying at least at 60. It's bouncing around a little bit, but this is performing better than a lot of the handhelds that I have. And we are upscaled as well. So yeah, I think this is doing just fine. But we'll try a little N64. So this is a game that's notoriously hard to emulate. So we're gonna give this a shot. I haven't tried this yet, obviously. Couldn't even find the ROM. We don't have a frame counter on this, unfortunately, but we're not seeing any tearing. We're not seeing any problems with the music. This seems to be going along pretty well splendidly, other than my really crappy driving here. Okay, well, I think that's enough of that. I think we know that it works out just fine, so cool. A couple things that were real big deals about the systems coming out right now are going to be the PlayStation stuff. So I just put Tekken on here. I put a game for each, I believe. Would have been smart of me to set up these emulators before we started doing this, huh? Yeah, that would have made sense. Okay, so we're running four times resolution right now. And she's holding stable at 60 FPS, it looks like. I don't remember the controls on this, especially when I'm not. Let's go D-pad, that makes my life easier. Oh man, this is kind of a weird controller to use for a D-pad, but it'll do. Hmm. Well, we know it works anyways. I just suck at it. I get more frustrated. It takes me more time to set the damn thing up than I get to play it. But, you know, it is what it is. I don't know, I think it looks pretty damn good. All right, move on to the next one. Oh, yeah. So I'm not sure how this is going to hold up. This could get interesting. Why is my screen so dim? I could use a gas pedal. Oh, there we go. It was the first button I hit. No, we're starting over. We're starting over. That's nonsense. I wasn't sure how to get out of my car. Oh, this feels cool in the hands. You can feel the speaker, like the vibration in the speakers, and it feels neat. Well, that didn't work out at all. I'll just get stuck on that wall for a while. But yeah, this is playing pretty much full speed here. We're rocking between like 57 and 60 FPS. 50, I'd say 55 and 60, but mostly up in the 60 range. It's looking good. We're at four times resolution. Uh, I can't remember which car drifts really well. It's not that one. There we go. It takes me a little bit to get my, my Baron straight. Right, let's see if I can do this corner. And then we'll try something else out. Oh, I didn't make it all the way, though. All right, well, let's try one more thing out here. So I did want to... You know what? Screw it. We'll try God of War. Why not? Why not? I don't know if this is the PAL version, but if it is, we're at, now we're going slow. Okay, let's see if we can't fix that here real quick. This is keeping it at three times resolution between 55 and 60 again. I could play it like this. This wouldn't bother me at all.
But man, that audio is killing me. It's all in the cutscenes, though. It's fine during gameplay. Just for kicks and giggles. I just want to see what the difference is between 2 and 3 as far as the performance goes. Pretty much the same. Okay. Well, at least we know that it wasn't holding it back. So I wanted to try one last thing out here. And I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. We're going to give it a try. So we're at 2 times resolution right here with Half-Life. On PS2. And she's holding pretty strong. Uh, she lost it a little bit there, maybe. Bet you'd be good at like one and a half times without any issues. Crank up some. I just realized that my screen is pretty much turned off on here. There. Maybe that's a little easier to see. It only took me like five games to figure that out for you guys. I like to play in the dark, so. Do I have to talk to everybody? Or can I just go do something? I'm trying to do practice so that I didn't have to do all this crap. I'd say that this is working pretty well. I don't have anybody to shoot at, but I thought I went, I went through practice to try to find somebody to shoot at, but just because it's such a long intro. But apparently you still go through the same stupid stuff. All right, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I'm done playing games. I just wanted to talk to kind of look at this and see what it was all about. So you can play regular PlayStation 2 at about one and a half times. Not as powerful as some of the devices we've seen lately. Not as weak as some of the ones we've seen lately either. Not terrible. Uh, one thing that's really cool about this, I mean, other than the fact that it's a tablet, right? So you can use this for other stuff. I've been using it to draw on. You make my thumbnails for the most part. I use my iPad most of the time, but I just wanted to try it. It does okay. I don't have the same application on here. So if I think if I did, I think I would probably be able to make the exact same thing on here. I have a very similar pencil for this as I do for that. So uh, Face ID doesn't work for sh on here but the tablet itself is really nice it's got a really nice uh almost like a square edge to it you do have your memory card and you also have to have a slot up on the top here to put a sim card in i wouldn't trust this to work on a U u.s sim card i'm almost positive it's not going to work on a u.s sim card actually most of the tablets you get from china don't work on u.s sim cards even like huawei ones sometimes don't work on u.s sim cards but here you got your speakers on the sides which are really nice they sound very good you have your charger which isn't a normal charger place you know you would normally stick it there it is weird that their buttons aren't right here Typically, your power buttons and then your camera would be here. On this particular device, it is set up to be a vertical device. So it has your power and your volume and stuff right here and your camera in the middle. So it, is, it does take a little bit to get used to. On the back here, you do have your cameras. I believe it's a 13 megapixel camera, if I remember right. One thing that would be nice about the Dimensity 700, the biggest advantage it has over the Helio 99 is that it has a better processing for photos. So you can have a 2K photo resolution, where on this one you cannot. You're topped out at like 1080. Not a big deal. So that's it. It did come with the screen cover on it in the case that it's not in, obviously, right now because I'm showing you guys what it looks like. But yeah, it's got some weight to it. It's a pretty heavy tablet for how small it is. Not nearly as heavy as my monstrous iPad Pro. As far as this goes, the iPega, this this thing is really nice to play with. I think I'm going to try this out on my Switch too. On my Switch too. On my Switch as well. Obviously it gets to smaller so you can put a cell phone in here. But it does get really big. Which is kind of nice too. These make a world of difference. And I don't know if you could tell on Half-Life. But I had this really stiff. And it wasn't turning very fast. And all I had to do was make a couple little moves here and it's still pretty stiff but not nearly as stiff and it was able to change how everything moved without going through menus and things like that which i think is really cool it doesn't have any macro buttons in the back which i don't know i'm hit or miss sometimes i like those sometimes i don't on a controller like this i think i'd have a hard time using it it takes a while to get used to this because your front fingers are up here if you think about like how you normally are on a controller right everything's kind of right here where you can use your index fingers on this particular device, you could, but you really can't use your indexes. Otherwise, you're going to lose the ability to use your R1 and L1 buttons. It is kind of cool for racing games once you get used to it, just because of the way your hands are sitting. I also tried Flight Simulator with this just real quick, but it kind of felt cool for that too, because everything kind of feels like it's where it's actually supposed to be, which is not something we're used to because I've never played with a controller like this, so at least not something I'm used to. And I believe this is initially made for the Switch, just the way it's housed. I did mention that before, but even if you look at where the cushions are in here for holding onto stuff, I haven't tried putting my Switch in it yet let's give it a try i really do like that nitro deck but yeah so you put this in here and it's actually kind of forms around the switch a little bit better than it does even the tablet light it down there's a pad right down the bottom here and a little cushion and then these bad boys come up and they kind of just stick right in there 
So yeah, it works out pretty good. And actually, it goes down below the switch, so it has the normal nook for the switch, and it looks like it goes below it as well, and off to the sides. Not made for a switch, but this would be comfortable for switch gaming too. Like I said, this isn't sponsored by either of these companies. I just, I had this stuff. Uh, I don't remember where I got it, but I have it, and I just wanted to try it out. But yeah, that's what I got for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Just a quick look here at the T90P from Telecast. It does have its downfalls. Obviously, you can't do any performance settings or anything like that for this, so you are just running in normal mode. I'm hoping that there's some performance profiles out there somewhere. I have seen them for the Helio G99, so maybe I can steal them for another device for this. I'm going to see if I can't make it mix and match here somehow. I'm, I'm hoping that I can come up with something, but for an inexpensive tablet, this is, these go for about $150, so you get a little bit more than you would for a handheld, right? Because you're getting a bigger screen, something you can use for more, but it is the equivalent of a Dimensity 700 chip. But as you saw, it can play some PlayStation at one and a half times resolution. You're not going to get every game, but you're going to get a decent library. I mean, we did pretty well there with God of War 2 on PSP. This is a great screen for that. The only other problem is that this thing is a fingerprint magnet but that's just any tablet let's be honest and i don't have the case on it right now so it's gonna get some fingerprints and that's okay you know that's why we have these cleaning cloths these cleaning cloths companies need somebody to buy their products otherwise they'd be out of business let me know what you think about this setup i think it's a little bit faster it can obviously process it better than the last time i did this with a different ipega game controller and a different telecast tablet i've had really good luck with these telecast tablets so they have been making some pretty good stuff and i've been pretty impressed by them just for price to performance wise like i said these usually go for about 150 160 bucks and you get a lot of tablet here for that amount of money and it can do a lot obviously outside of the gaming space too but when it comes to retro gaming hands down it can pretty much play everything in in some capacity or another oh and i didn't go through game streaming on it which i really wanted to do and i really just wanted to show you this this is where this really accelerates with this 11 inch 2k 2000 by 1200 120 hertz display it is just freaking awesome for game streaming and it just looks so nice Where's the bolt, lightning bolt guy? There he is. He goes invisible. There he is. I just hit him. Nope, that's... Shoot. Sorry. If you're not familiar, this is Wolfenstein here. I'm just playing on Game Pass. Uh-oh. And I can spare her life. And then I can bring her back to life. If this guy doesn't kill me first. Oh, I died. Oh, well. So this screen looks beautiful when you're streaming. And unfortunately, I just don't have my PlayStation hooked up right now. I'm moving some stuff around. But this gives you kind of a feel for what it's all about. And it is fantastic. What do you think about this setup? Is it something that you would do? The price is about right. You know, it's between 150 and 160 bucks for this tablet. Uh, these iPegas usually go about 30 bucks. So I'll put links to both of them down in my thing about Bob's. So you guys can take a look at them if you want to on your own. But that's all I got for you today. So don't forget to, again, comment, rate, subscribe, share this video with your friends because sharing helps grow the channel and I can use all the help that I can get. Just ask my wife. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Sorry about the delays. I know it's been like five days since I put a video up, but I've got a stack of stuff here, so I just got to get through it. Appreciate you sticking around to the end. Do me a favor. Subscribe if you haven't already. Come on. You got to do it. Just join the crew. And I'm just kidding. You don't have to, but yeah, you really do. Uh, also, watch one of these other videos over here on the side that YouTube decided that you're going to like. Thanks for watching. Bye.